Hi, beloved, and thank you for taking a couple of minutes, a few minutes to check in with this video. What a rich and a wonderful and a blessed weekend we had this last weekend to celebrate in a very focused way both the crucifixion and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For every believer, we are celebrating these realities daily as we live in the hope of the life and the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in God's design. Uh, but indeed, it was a special opportunity to gather again this last weekend, both on Friday night, for those of you who could be with us, as well as Sunday morning, uh, to celebrate, to rejoice, to be strengthened in our faith, in the glory of Christ, in the purposes of God, in the work of Christ. And I want to draw to your attention Psalm 145, as I've been highlighting a number of different psalms. This is uh, one of the more just overwhelmingly majestic psalms as David is declaring God's praise. He's reflecting on God's character. He's reflecting on God's work. And he just, re just, just resounds with praise and glory and joy in God. So I want to read this psalm, and then I want to connect it to the book of Colossians, which I'm going to begin to preach through this coming Lord's Day. Uh, so hear these words from David, Psalm 145, a song of praise of David. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him, and he also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And so again, David is overwhelmed with the majesty and the splendor and the glory and the greatness, the unsearchable greatness of God. And he worships him and he longs for others to worship him and to bless God's name. And that's the fuel of evangelism. That's the fuel of wanting to see others come to faith in Christ, that they might worship him and that God might receive the glory and the honor that is due his name. Well, as I think about this psalm and meditate on these truths of the greatness of God's character and of his works, it all comes to fullest expression in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this coming Lord's Day, as we begin to get into the book of Colossians, uh, this is what is preeminent, the greatness and the glory of God in Jesus Christ. Really, the theme of Colossians could simply be summarized as Christ is all. Christ is all. That is what Paul is jealous for in communicating to the Colossians, even as God is to us, that we would know that all of his fullness is found in Jesus Christ. 
Let me just read a small portion of chapter 1 in Colossians that declares this reality, and you'll see how this is so preeminent in the mind of God through Paul. Colossians 1, beginning in verse 15, I just want to read a, a portion of this. We read this of Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. And that's in Colossians 1, verses 15 to 20, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And beloved, that is what God wants us to know of him in the fullness of his fullness in the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the life, the hope, the riches, the power, the blessings, the treasure, everything that we have in him and to be walking with him. And so that's going to be our focus as we get into the book of Colossians, that he, Jesus Christ, is all in all. And I want to encourage you to be reading Colossians on a regular basis. It's only four chapters long. You can read it once a week. You can read it once a day, uh, whatever you may be inclined. But to be saturating yourself with these truths and to be praying uh, that God would be strengthening all of us in faith in Christ, in knowing God through faith in Christ, empowered by his spirit, and so walking in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm excited to be getting into this book and uh, be getting into all the things the Lord has for us as we move through these things. We'll be back in our regular schedule of things this coming Lord's Day with Equipping Hour at 9 a.m. as Tim is going to be continuing the series on the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Worship service, of course, at 10.30 a.m. And then we'll be having an evening service this coming Sunday night, the third Sunday of the month, as we'll be gathering to hear from God's Word, to share in the Lord's Supper, and uh, to partake in all that God has for us. So I hope that you'll be able to be with us, and if not in person, in spirit. It. And until then, we we'll look forward to seeing you and may you know God's blessings in fullest measure in the Lord Jesus. Take care and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.